Rush book, which was bought in Moscow. And there was also, but the dot was missing. I said, now can you tell me how much is, uh, on, on what written is this uh, page written? Well, it's four quarters. No, well, four quarters. And how many eights? Well, eight, 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 eight. Now, where are they? And I started, the half lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, but where's the eighth? I don't know. And I said, I didn't even realize that it could be a print. Uh, missing, missing, missing. And I said, no, I can't. But what should be then there? What should we do there to have the, the eighth? Uh, because there was a slur, and, so, and I didn't know. She was so angry because she, I was very obstinate, but she also was obstinate. <laughs> I got that from her. She would not admit that you do exactly that what, what it was missing, yeah. but I, she would not admit. Yeah. I, no. Uh, so that she put me in, you know, we were very poor in Paris. I told you that uh, we got just only 100 rubles from the Tante Sophie sent every month. And she put me in that, uh, we had only two little rooms. From the one room, I could see the Eiffel Tower and the beautiful, uh, uh, how we call that, the Feu d'Artifice? Feu d'Artifice. Fireworks. Fireworks. Fantastic. So, sous les toits de Paris, mais très, très, très lointain, la Tour Eiffel, avec toute la splendeur. And then um, we, uh, were, uh, she, we had only two rooms and a little corridor. And that corridor, in that corridor, which was the entrance of, the, of our little apartment, sous les toits de Paris, and the place where you put the coal, we didn't have a central heating, and with the coal, the wood, and all the, the, the garbage and all that, and she put me in. She, I was locked. Was the further, was, I knew that she was going to lock me. I had behind the bags, behind the bags, I had my toys hidden. Uh -huh. And I was so glad to be at last. I was relieved from the lessons, and I was on my own, and I could play again my little school. No that. music at all. No music. At all. Well, tell us how you made the toys. Oh, I made them from paper. I had all kinds of, I had a whole class. I did cut them all out, and then I did the benches, and the, the teacher was bigger and longer and slender. And so, well, I, I had a very good time. And suddenly, my mother knocked at the door. Now, my Basheri, do you know now what is missing? No, mama. It was already mid midday, and I was still locked. I said, uh, Et maintenant, sais-tu ce qui manque? Non, maman. Uh, and suddenly the door was open. I thought it was the moment that I could get out. No, she only pushed me with a, a plate of porridge. <laughs> and then <laughs> she locked me in again. I ate my porridge. And then she knocked again. Well, you know, it was terrible. The whole day, it was for me uh, very boring at the end. And I said, a point, missing the dot. Ah, enfin, je savais bien, ma petite fille. Mais je savais bien que tu le savais. And so then I came out. And from that time, I did hate all the lessons. It was a horrible time. It was so beautiful, those two and a half years. I was sick. But I didn't have to do anything. I, I went to the Bois de Vincennes. I went to the Bois de, Bois de Boulogne. I went with a big, how do you call that? Hula. Hula, hula. Oh, yeah, hoop. Hoop skirt? You know. No, no, hoop to play with. The hoop. Oh, that you the hula. Hula. And, uh, and yeah, and you stick. have here, yeah. you know, you can do that. The hula hoop. The hoop. hoop. But yeah. how is it? How is it got? Hoopa, hoopa hola? Hula hoop. Hula hoop. Hula hoop. Yeah. Yes, it's a hula hoop. Yes, hula. you can do that with the... Oh. Yes, I remember. Sonia, I remember that you hoop. brought that over to our house to Philip. You brought one to Philip when he was a little boy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, because she likes to cut out his little figures for children. To oh yeah, yes, yes. always. Wherever I am, when I see a child, I have always the paper and scissors in my box. I have even today my scissors in case that a child comes in, and so I always cut something for them, and they like it. 
Yeah, not all spoiled. Oh, yeah, because you have the fantasy of a child. You can always approach oh, yeah, sure, your fantasy. Oh, yes, sure, because I was a child because myself. Because I know, yeah. I can remember that Philip said that... Uh, I did a house for him. Yes, that he felt that you had never grown up, that you understood him when he was a child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that you had always, that, always a part of you, a child. Well, that it, is the way to put it. It's a great compliment, though, because well, he said all the other adults, he... He didn't yeah, understand. It is not what I said yesterday. You should not bend to a child. You should lift a child. That's right. Uh, and uh, so many mothers came to me yesterday to say, you are so right. You are so right. I'm also now going, oh, that's good. If you have learned something of it, the child will feel much better. So tell us of your first experience at the conservatory. Oh, the conservatory. You mean how I was accepted? Well, first, before the exam, uh, all the mothers and the parents are always together with the children. They, the children never go alone in uh, conservatory. And so I was also always chaperoned with my mother. Uh, there was not very much danger because I was only about nine years old, but I was chaperoned every time. And so uh, uh, in the conservatory, there are in the exam days. There are there are two exams on on the same day for violin here and for piano there, and I went on both. And the mothers were very jealous and very uh, very uncomfortable when they met my mother, and they said, uh, "The piano is here. We just say, Madam, say I know that's from that side." Yeah that my daughter is going to the other side, she goes for the violin. When I was ready with my violin, I came back. Then, and I gave it. The other one said to me, no, you shouldn't go, Ling. The violin is on that side. She just came out of it. Yeah. Now we go for the piano. Oh. <laughs> and when I was, I we were very poor and I had no real shoes, but I had a wonderful violin keys that the Tante Sophie sent me. Those are felt uh, shoes, felt, 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 felt red shoes, so that I, I was kept beautifully warm, but you'd never hear somebody walk in it. So when I came on the stage for my exam, I saw three heads together. Gabriel Fauré was white, and um, uh, there was three other people there. As a four people were talking and talking. Now it's coming. I guess they said there's coming somebody, so a little girl who just made her exam for the violin. Oh, stupid! Oh, stupid! As I, I guess they have talked about it. All the heads were together, and I come and I stay. I stay and I stand until they say play. I say, are you ready for <laughs> something? So I stay. My, I stay. I did not yet sit on my piano. And then, oh, mais elle est déjà là, la petite. Oh, she's already here. Uh, I, we, did you hear her come? Uh, no, no. Did you hear her come? No. Uh, because they didn't hear my heels, nothing. Because I, I came in violin keys. Violin keys you'd never hear. Because uh, people walk. And then, said, uh, alors, s'il vous plaît, mademoiselle, commencez. Quand, quand, quand il vous plaira. When you want to play, start. Well, I started to play, and I played the Pesirata, the third movement. And I played that. I, played that. I think I, I, had, I thought to myself, I think I had a good day today. When I was finished, suddenly one of them, the, the, the white hair, Gabriel Fauré, said to me, Mademoiselle, venez, venez par ici, venez. I thought I played awfully badly, or they would think that it was not classical enough or so, and my heart went like that. I had a heart, a small heart, but it also beat it, just like a gold up. I said, I really thought I played so. What do they, what the heck do they want me to come down? Now I came down. Mademoiselle, nous voudrions savoir, we would like to know. With whom did you study? Or oh, avec mama, with my mother. Oh, and she was pupil of Rubinstein, uh, Moscow. 
Oh, mais ça se comprend. Oh, that is self-explanatory. Oh, really. And that is the way that I, uh, I came out of that exam. And after the exam, there's always a spalier, all uh, like that, like here in Winnipeg, after, the, uh, after that, uh, that Renommé festival. You have the, all the judicators, when they, the, all the students are here making spalier, and then the judicators go out. And so my, my mother was also standing like all the other ones, and I went, I stood before her, but when I saw suddenly the judicators coming out, You know who were the judicators were? Debussy, Mashkovsky, and Ravel. I have still a visit card from Ravel. And you know, uh, when I saw that Gabriel Forrest suddenly went right to my mother, to, to where I stood, I took her, her skirt and I went behind the skirt. I was very, very small. I could do that. I only had my head out. Look. Is that your little daughter? We oui, miss you. Very proud. We oui, miss you. Well, that's an extraordinary idea. And I, I felt, I, I don't know how I felt. I, I felt uncomfortable anyway. And that is the, the little story how I was admitted immediately, of course, uh, in, in that uh, in the class to Cheney. The uh, Cheney, Madame Cheney, it was the mother of Madame Long. Madame Long was uh, in... Oh, no, oh, you know even... Well, I, well, you know all the personalities. Well, very good. You know also the receipt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, well, yeah, of course. Also, that Madame Long was uh, uh, so uh, well known and through all these people, I came suddenly to, uh, uh, to the best part that I met everybody. And uh, Madame Chenet, by the, by the lessons, uh, uh, she gave always, because she had a schedule, what I had to play. And the other studies which I had to buy, and I didn't like them all, I did scribble that with a, with a mark uh, uh, pencil. All the pages like that, she couldn't see the fingering. And, I, and, I put, and then I, I put that on the... T t My dear, how come that your page is so scribbled? Oh, I bought it off the K. It was only five cents. <laughs> But you, you, must, you, <coughs> you must tell that you met uh, Madame Joachim. To tell this, this Madame story. Joachim, it was something very different. It was because I, uh, she heard me. That is another story. Another that, story. Okay. No, I can't go back to that. That Why is not? where the, that's that, important. That is, that is how, uh, in the war time, we lost all contact with my Tante Sophie in, 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 in uh, well, Moscow. Right. And she didn't send anymore the hundred rubles. And suddenly, we were, we hanged. We had no money at all, nothing. And the, the apartment that we had, we had to give up. And so, we... Uh, you must the, tell Sonia that you were in Berlin at that time. You yes, just arrived in, in Berlin. Berlin. Uh, a very short time, a few weeks before the outbreak of the First World War. Yeah. It was an awful time. So then when we had to give up that uh, little apartment, which was anyway not a very wealthy one, but it was a, a roof. And then we put, the landlord was very nice. They, uh, I think they liked me very much because they also one of them uh, heard me in one of the concerts. So, and they said, we shall, you can store all your furniture. It was not very much. Uh, uh, you can put it in the attic while you will uh, settle all your stories and your uh, uh, what you have to do the, for the Red Cross to get money. And you know the Red Cross is a, a fantastic institute, but it takes time until you get you go through, so you can starve in between until yes. your pa your papers are filled and that you are really needed and that you can really get the money. So well. Uh, anyway, we were suddenly in the street. Also, I took my little violin, and it was the 1st of September. A such a memorable. 1914. 14. It was a raining day. It was pouring. And my sister uh, had a, an, an umbrella. Uh, you know, the sister who was kidnapped came uh, after 19 years. My mother never saw her. 
And suddenly she was before the door in Paris. When she knocked at that door, and she was very tall, and she had a Russian fur, she looked elegant. So, yes. And I, when she knocked at the door, I told to my mother, "Il y a une dame qui veut te parler. There's a lady who wants to talk to you." She found where we lived in Paris, and uh, that was not Berlin. That was Paris. And from per from Berlin, then she from from Paris, then she went to Berlin with us because she was there suddenly. And then <laughs> uh, the, the, the she my mother did not recognize my my, my sister, my half sister. She did not recognize her, but my my sister recognized my mother, and she only said that word, "Mama," and it was a scene that, as a child, what I was. I will never forget how these women were not not separated for a long time. They were so hugged together. They were only one. And this is, of course, it's an impression. Well, that sister that now now we are we are now in in Berlin, and she was always with us. So suddenly, without money, without nothing, and she took the umbrella and a, uh, a, a no a blanket, yes, to put on the on. The bench. bench. We went in the tear garden. We went in that garden, you know, a park, in the tear garden, and um, I had um, a violin, and my mother had a shrito brought, a bread, under the. And so we went and we sit. We sat until we we were waiting for the hours when we can go to the Red Cross, uh, uh, in, uh, how you call that, the uh, office, and to talk about our things. And now, at the end of the day. I felt very hungry, and I said, "It's extraordinary. We, are, we can't only live on that bread. The bread is already half because we were free to eat that bread." And so, how? I have an idea. Why shouldn't I go? I have my violin with me. Why can't I go to to one of the restaurants or cafes and I play for for the food? I was so stupid not to ask a honorar. And so we went in the rain. We went from like it's like the Broadway. We went from one or that. Was one of them was filled and was many lights and uh, many lights and uh, so uh, inviting to go in. And it smelled, it smelled of food. I said, well, I go in. Stirring for everybody who doesn't know her good enough, you know, she has no idea about years. You know, oh, and about years, about places, she mixes enough, things up no the whole time, you well, know. And so I always feel I have to, I have no, to, I have to correct no. these things. Oh, you don't, know. don't yeah, yeah. No, I just, I just why I interfere once in a while. That's very important to interfere to make to put the things right yeah. because I say them all so wrong. But I, I only remember. Yes. Let's see where we uh, about the. Uh, yeah, tell, that tell, us, wait, tell us. Tell us. Start picking up where you decided to, to yes. play for your dinner. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so then we got up from our raining bench, and we walked, and walked, and walked until it is a very long street, the Friedrich Street, Friedrichstraße. And then there was a big uh, Schultheis. It was like here you have Molson. Schultheis is a beer. And this beer local had all filled up with soldiers. And everywhere, and so loud. And there were, they were some music there, uh, horrible music, a band, and so And then I went in with all my courage. Well, you know, when you, are, when you can play, Napasidata on the stage, and you have the concentration not to do one note wrong, and you can also go in and <laughs> and talk with them. For food. Yeah. I would like to talk with your manager. Manager, and I said that in French. <laughs> I could I couldn't talk the German. And uh, who is of you who who can talk French with that little girl? So, there was one one waiter 
perhaps she was an immigrant or so, and he translated. Uh, she wants to talk with the manager, with you. Uh, with me, and she heard. What do you want? He looked at me. Uh, I was so small and he was so tall. And then I said, I was proposing, um, you know, we, uh, we, because of the Red Cross uh, uh, obligations, uh, we are not yet through, so we are a little bit embarrassed and we, we have no stay. And I would like to, we are, would like to play for you. What for? Why? Well, for dinner. You want to play for me? That's it. But uh, he came, he, he brought me, not in a concert scene, not in an artist room, but it was a, a uh, getaway, you know, where all the, the chairs were piloted uh, one over another for the summer. It, go, it goes in the garden. So in that, in that little uh, uh, place, I opened my violin and uh, the overall of my violin was wet because it was raining. But inside, I, was, I put a blanket and it was all right. And so I opened it and I played the shakon. What could I play here? Without accompaniment, of course. I take then the resistance of all the literature and I played the shakon. Suddenly he was more serious and he said, Well, but there's a problem. I, I, we have our... I don't think so that they were... They had a union or so. But I have engaged my people, they play until one o'clock. You could only play after one o'clock. We are still until three. Oh, we in, are open. in the intermission, you play in the, the intermission, yeah. yes, and so. Well, no, after one o'clock. I had to wait at one o'clock. And I had then from one to three I could play. I played all oh, what I could for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> on the piano, on the violin, on the piano. And this is one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Surely, surely. And they had the... Oh, I had it. Oh, you had it. Wonderful. Oh, good. I, said, oh, I one thought country. you wouldn't eat. I want to pack. have three dinners, and I want to order whatever I want. Oh, it's all right. Yes, you can have that. As though I have, uh, we were not hungry. We had it wonderful. You know, when I was ordering the, the dinner, I had four waiters, and they always brought the things twice because we were so busy to do it quicker. To, to serve me. You got so popular, you mean? Yeah. And so I got, oh, un veau fricassé. Uh, I have it all, but thank you very much. Uh, very uh, uh, angry, he put his hand behind, he took that, and he went back. <laughs> so that, that was the story, how I always received all the meals. I, if I could have eaten at least twice, that would be the best occasion, but I couldn't eat more than what I did throw in <laughs> on that evening. And so after, at one o'clock, I started to play. Of course, they put me on my poor little uh, dress that I had. They put me a big sharp, you know, black, white, and red. You know, that's the German flag. <laughs> I was suddenly <laughs> like, a, like a doll. I had a sharp. And then I played Shakur <laughs> with that straw. I look like a salta bomb girl. Like a belt or what? A Spanish dancer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, German. German. How was the guy's girl? Yeah. How was it received? Fantastically. Yeah, they, they liked him. You know, they were so loud. So loud. And they, all the, I played there. I was, I was there about uh, two weeks in that, in that restaurant. And they were always less and less, less and less soldiers. <laughs> and uh, because uh, they lost their job. because they were asked not to sing, oh, oh, oh. you know they they had their Schulter's beer. They were very gay, and so and, and uh, they were asked. And so it was boring for them that they had to shut up, and so they went to another place, uh, I guess. And but in the meantime, you played things besides the Bach Chacon. Oh sure. How about uh, the Deutschland? Oh. That I, I did it uh, with, with variations on my violin. <laughs> I had to start all of that. Like you say, oh, Canada, you know, the same way I have also uh, had to play all those Deutsch and Deutsch and Uberalis on the piano, on the violin. And so they were, they were so, uh, you know, I think that they thought that the violin is only a one tone instrument 
he never heard double stops or, or so many calls what I did. So they, they thought it was a wonder. <laughs> so and then when I, after the after the three o'clock, we didn't know where to go. So I had to go back to the TV on our back, on, on bench. our bench. And suddenly the one who did serve us the best, and he was the quickest, the, the fastest, he said, where are you going now? Where's your address? We have no address. You have no address? No. And so he said, well, that's an awful thing. Well, that, well that's, that's the result of a war situation, yes. Well, I will tell you something. He was very embarrassed. I think he improvised that in this minute, and he didn't even talk to his wife. So it was a kind of a surprise when suddenly three people came to that little, uh, the, the little apartment of that poor waiter. And they said, we have a little um, corridor, we have the kitchen, and we have a, a salon, and we have a, a, a bedroom. You could be in our uh, in in the salon. The only trouble is that after three o'clock, I have to su supervise in the in that restaurant uh, how the dishes are set and if they are all washed and so for the next day. So I come. Mind? Oh no, no! I was so glad to have a place where we could uh, sit uh, without rain, and so we we are sleeping. They arrange for us three possibility to sleep. And after three o'clock, at, at uh, about four o'clock, I heard a key, and he went through us, and he went to his uh, wife in his bedroom. Well, it was touching, extraordinary touching. And then and the next day, you know, all was rushed all the day. They had little tickets to have some sugar, to, to have the bread, to have the milk, to have everything. It was rushed. And they had only two cars. There were only men and women. And they had always... For three, four days, they had um, uh, uh, shared their breakfast with us. It was extraordinary. And so, um, on the fourth, fourth day, um, they uh, uh, said, uh, the one uh, waiter said that he is auberger. The, he's uh, uh, placing us in his apartment, but he can't do it anymore. So. Uh, I'm so sorry, you can't come again at our place, but I have talked with my colleague. He will take you. He has also two rooms and, and a kitchen, so, so you can go there. So we will have this place in another little place. Well, we are like a wanderer, you know, so uh, he didn't mind. We had nothing with us, so he didn't mind where we went. So we went there again. There uh, we were stayed much longer. We went over a week, and then suddenly, I had, my mother said, we have to go away and we have to see something to, to be, that could be done because we can't stay here. I said, why? And you know why? Because the waiter was, uh, uh, I pleased him too much. <laughs> and my mother, of course, she was my chaperone and she wanted to save me from any stores. <laughs> On my store. So we had to go. And then a little bit, a little bit. Yes, in one of the in one of the evenings, when I played again uh, something of my repertory, there was a lady coming to me. Said, because everybody knew from each other that there was something happening in that shultash. You know, it was a quick story. Uh, you call that uh, uh, from mouth to mouth, you know. And Madame Joachim was coming to see that wonder. And she came and said, oh, my, that is Sonia, but I know her. But it is, but it is, uh, and the, from that moment she was my godmother, and she was Madame Joachim. So uh, she, get, she got me then, for the very first time, to a better place with Anton Hecking, was a very well-known cellist who played for, also for his living. He couldn't only be in the, in the orchestra, but he was, he had his evening at the, uh, the, the that. <coughs> the Café de Kufusundan. And uh, uh, she, uh, that, uh, when I went to him, she said, uh, uh, you could play there. It's much better, and a much better public. It's a, it's a very nice café. Well, it's a fate you it, didn't it? 
upon it. Oh, they paid me and, uh, and not yet that far. And so, you see, uh, the, when Hicking saw me, I was, so, I was still very small. I was a long time in Lilliput. I only came to better because of the good food and so on, and I restored myself. But I was always too small. You know, when I was, it was a very bad story for me. Because when I was, uh, I was already uh, eight or nine years, and then the ladies were so emotional when the, the tears came out. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. She's about four years old. Look what she can do. <laughs> it was so extraordinary. When I was already 11 years, 12 years, so young, she can't be more than six or seven years old. So, so it was always adding to all the wonder. <laughs> then, because <laughs> they always thought I was such so small. I was so young. I was already going ahead in my age. Well, and that is what happened. Now, then, uh, when he saw me, I had my violin. So you are recommended to play with me. And it's all right because my uh, accompanist, he has already another place that he would like to share with another artist. So you could have the half of it if you want. But uh, can you really accompany? I said, and suddenly he said in a not a very nice way, you know, like somebody who is an artist and that is just a little child. Well then, pick up the Bowman uh, uh, concerto. Where is it? So, it must be there down there. I took it up. I took it up, put it on the thing. And I started to, I started to look at the pages. Now why don't you start? Before you read something that you don't know, you have to study it first. And then I studied. And I, I saw immediately the whole thing. We could be. Oh, well, that's all right. That's good. Now, this man, when he saw that I was accepted, the other accompanist, when he saw that I was accepted, he was so happy because he could go somewhere else. And he made a tricky uh, arrangement with my, uh, with my payment. He got $12, you know, every day for his, uh, I don't know how many hours he played with him. I don't remember how many hours I played with Anton Hecke. And uh, so that he got $12. He didn't tell me that he got $12. He said, I will pay you $7. <laughs> That's so extraordinary. We have immediately then uh, hired a little room. And we were three. That the room was so small that the, the bed of my poor sister had always to be put up on the floor, standing, because we could move uh, only for the night, you know. We were three in it. But so we were always, the two beds were, that, that, was the, that was the window, that was the one bed, and that was the other bed, and then the third bed was always put up. And so, well, we were, uh, we hired, that was 15, 15 marks. Well, uh, I had to play several times to pay that, and so, well, uh, and, and later, later, I just uh, happened to know. He got $12 there and my $5. That was for him a bargain. I should say so. Well, so I know life from all sides. <laughs> now, now what, about, uh, what about Madame Joachim? Madame Joachim, uh, afterwards, she said uh, to me, uh, and she plays violin, you know, violin fantastically. Yes. Now, will you play? You know, that I can't play violin. How come? I sold it. I have. I, I had to pay this or that. I, I wanted now to lift to lift us up, so I sold it. She sold it. Yes. What was that for a violin? It's from. Uh, I think. What is that? Uh, French. Cara, Caras. I think. It was a very nice violin, but not a good one. <laughs> I could play on any box, but, <laughs> but uh, it was not so. But I, I sold it. I had somebody for a little while. I said, but that is impossible. You must get a violin. And so she arranged it 
that because she was the daughter in law from Joachim, Joachim had. Um, of Joseph yeah, Joachim. Of Joseph Joachim. Joseph, Joseph yeah. Of course, he had a Stradivarius and 11 other ones. And among the study violins that he had was one of, uh, good enough. And I, I got it. But I couldn't get it because in the will, they had some for, uh, a formula there that it has to be sold or it stays in the family. Well, then the uh, Mendelssohn's, because I'm a protégé of, uh, of the house of, uh, of, of Mendelssohn, uh, Felix Robert Mendelssohn, you know, the house, uh, the parents, uh, the, the bankers. The bankers, well, uh, the relatives of, of, uh, the uh, of uh, Mendelssohn. And they. I think they paid 400 marks only to get that nice violin, so I got it, and I have it still today. I never could um, lift myself up to get a nice thread. And, but anyway, when I showed it to Thibault, with whom I also worked in Paris, he played on my violin, and he said, I don't think so, I could ever play on that box. <laughs> Because he had, of course, a strat. And I said, that's not a box. It is one of the, uh, the study violins of Joachim. It's a copy of the, of the in the, seven, the, 17, the 1700 uh, Guarneri. It's a copy. Uh, I said, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I can play on it. I certainly can. And when I played to, um, with him, suddenly he was so impressed and so that I, I studied with, uh, with him a little bit, but uh, uh, he had the French Boeing, and, had, I, I, and I had my own Boeing, so we didn't stay very long together. But he's a charming man. Now, this is a, a man who has so much uh, wit. That with uh, with uh, Thibault, you always had to laugh at the end. So he, he told one of his stories. So did I tell you that story? Surely not. Thibault uh, told once oh, yes. that he was, uh, he had so many concerts that he really did not know always what he was playing. And he was thinking that he had the Beethoven concerto on that day. And, you know, it starts. So he put his violin like that. The bow. And suddenly he's. He was always And this man, the Jacques Thibault, had a, a funny way to stand. He st stood like that. With cross so legs, yeah. With, with, the, with cross this legs. kind. What? Cross no, legs. Not, cross. not no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, you say? Very wide. Yeah. And so he was always balancing like a clock, like you know, like the in the in the English in London the tower, you know, <laughs> the, the the tower that has like a big a clock. And so event. he was like that. Like a and, and because he was a little bit nervous, you know, of the change of the program, and he played, he played, he played, and suddenly. When he played, he saw a hand coming out <laughs> between his between, between his, his legs. legs yeah. He thought he didn't see well. So again, coming from behind. From the behind. Hand from behind. So again. Again. <laughs> And suddenly he saw a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, and then this moment, je croyais devenir mère. I thought that I was suddenly a mother. But you must give some explanations on And you know what it was? It was the cellist. The cellist was behind, and he lost his paper, his parts. And he tried to get his part. <laughs> those legs. It was too far, so even with his bold. Uh. <laughs>
best of great Thibault was with the Casals and Cortot. Oh, yeah. That uh, he played uh, with the trio. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I, I met quite some people. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your experiences with Casals as a person. Well, uh, Casals, of course. Uh, uh, and how you happen to be in, in Spain. Well, that is a story, a very sad story, how we came, we happened to uh, be in Spain. It is, we were uh, kind of immigrating there because we had uh, stories about our uh, apartment. We, there was no possibility to live in, in Berlin because there was no apartment. We had After three. After the First World War. After the First World War, yeah. It was the First World War. And then... Uh, we uh, we couldn't get we didn't know where to live so we had our uh, furniture stored somewhere and uh, other people were in, in in our apartment and so because it was so uh, awful then we had the idea to get away from Berlin and we went suddenly we were in Spain and the the big uh, the, le voyage how you call it the trip to to Spain was. Uh, rather stormy and that uh, we had not enough money because of, uh, when when we didn't have a, a a place where to live it was uh, gone so that uh, the poor Walter had also no place to paint and so we could sell always less and less and we were uh, more or less a little bit in trouble and so we couldn't pay a a beautiful trip on a beautiful ship, but on a very small, a tiny little... Uh, freighter. Freighter. A freighter, yeah. And suddenly, at the Biscaya, was a horrible, a one, you know, a horrible storm. And that little boat, well, of course, was uh, 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 like a cradle. Tossed back and forth. Tossed back and forth, thank you. And so you see the... Uh, that on that day, um, all the chairs and everything was upside down. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's all right. I was finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real storm, and it's deep. <laughs> That was, a, that was a tempest in a teacup. Why did you take it away? Do you think I will do it again? I thought you might, you might throw it over me for a Friday. Well, and then... Um, but this was on the Bay of Biscay. On so. the Bay, and all the our furniture were upside down, and so... And I said to, to, um, uh, to Walter, why did you take such a little boy, uh, such a little ship? Other people who are even doing less than what we can do, and they have, of course, the money to go on a big ship, and we are now here on that, we are in a danger, and so, and, and suddenly, you know, after the storm, it was so beautiful that then I, I wrote the Biscaya Sonata for my, for my piano, and the, the four notes, you know, the, quart, the, the fourth, the, the, these harmonies, can I show it to you? On, on these four notes. This was a, uh, the start of the fantastic uh, impression I had from this voyage. So it, uh, after all, we, were, we survived it, and I have a new sonat. Which one was the it? Second the second one. The second sonat. Quarte the Piscaya, I hope that, uh, May uh, I, If I may interfere here a little bit, I would say the whole hmm. thing was not so tame. Um, you know, Sonia was, <laughs> was always uh, 
furious. She was, if she's furious, she blames us the people. So she blamed poor Grandma Day when they were on the trip, you know, when they stopped. Yeah. And you see, and you brought me in this situation. You know, the rich people, they can have their luxury support or so, and we have to go in the poor freighter. Now, if I die now, it's your mistake. You, you, you really did it, you know. So Grandma Day was in a terrible situation, and I know the situation only from the letters, how, how hum humorful uh, <laughs> Grandma Day describes the situation. Until he had finally enough, and he went on the on the top on, on the on the on the deck, you know, and he suddenly started. He can't stand anymore in the cabin, and he went out, and then he enjoyed the storm, and he makes a marvelous and, description and how he how he enjoyed the storm, yeah, how the uh, top of the boat went up and down again. The double storm, the double <laughs> storm, yeah, yeah. And it was a fantastic thing that he has sketched about it. Mm, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yes, and then the second movement is the storm. And the, third, and the last movement is the fantastic coming in Spain with all that uh, festival. It was gay, it was uh, written, and that is the fourth movement. Oh, the arrival on the harbor. The arrival you know, on the harbor. The people jumping well, around and running and uh, loading and don't loading and so on. And then we, uh, we hired window. a little uh, little house for the very first time. We had a house with, uh, with very nice exotic uh, palms and so. And uh, it was uh, reasonable and, and it was not that expensive like today. And so, uh, again, I had a home and I could compose. And I composed quite a few things. That is where I have think I have composed my violin concerto. Exactly, yeah. 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 And then when I, uh, of course, then this way I also met um, the music p p circles and also also Pablo Casals. When I played him my violin concerto, uh, he was very amazed and very impressed. And that is how he has written for me.